Here we're going to be presenting a practical in chemistry, which is mostly useful for those that are writing the NECO 2020. And one of the practical in chemistry titration of hydrometric analysis is what we are presenting today. And according to the instruction given by the exam board, we have prepared a solution A, which consists of an acid, and a solution B, which consists of a base, a weak base. So now, let's look at this question and the way it is. Um, before we start with the question, there are some procedures you need to take notes when doing titration. The first one, when you're filling the burette with the funnel, when you're true with the filling, you remove the funnel so it won't continue topping it up for you. And secondly, when you draw the pipettes, you don't blow it. Immediately the pipette is discharging the content. Don't blow it because it is designed to discharge a fixed volume. So by blowing it, you have increased the volume. And next, and next pre uh, precaution, you don't view the burette either on the side to avoid parallax error. You view straight and you concentrate on the lower meniscus. When I say meniscus, I mean the meniscus goes this way. So you concentrate on this lower side. That is the lower meniscus, not the two edges. So as we proceed on the experiment, I uh, will give more procedures that you need to follow. As the case may be. So let's go for the question. A is a solution containing 0.14 mole, mole per dm cube of molarity of HCl. So this is solution A that contains HCl. B is a solution containing 5.50 gram of X2CO3. X2CO3 implies that we don't know this particular element. So let's proceed, which is a definitely a weak base of per dm cube of the solution. It contains 5.50, that is the mass condition of B is given. So put A into the burettes. Let's go as the D, as the six. Put A into the burettes. Avoid the air bubbles so you can get your accurate results, accurate measurement. Wow, it has gone beyond that, so I, I adjust. I'm using ball bearing and not the pin that you are familiar with. So this is ball bearing. It's another one, another way of holding the burette. So now let's continue. They said put A into the burette, which has been filled to zero. Put A into the burette and titrate against 20 or 25 centimeters cube of B. Now the volume of pipettes used corresponds to the number, the volume of base used. Here we have 25 centimeter cube of the base. So we are using 25 and the volume of the base must be recorded on top of the table and the indicator used must also be recorded. They said using methyl orange indicator. So this is our indicator methyl orange. So now how do I put the base? I pipe it. I suck the pipe it. I suck the base into the titrating flask. So now the lower minus cross is on it, so I drop. As I have said earlier, I do not blow the pipe in, so volume is complete. Then I add one or two drops to make it visible, the color. One, two. So increase the visibility, let me add one more drop. So now, the color of methyl orange in the basic medium is yellow. So when we titrate, the color change indicates the end point of the reaction. So let's proceed. We start a titration. We titrate the acid against the base. Let's go. For the first titration, you need to be careful because you don't know the range 
or volume of acid that will completely titrate the base. You don't know whether it is 9, whether it is 10, 15, or thereabouts. So you have to get that range with the first one. So that is why the first titration is called the raw titration. So let's go. Sometimes it's annoying. Yeah, it's a mix. So we go. So that's that. Let's proceed. So we'll go for the second titration. When it is getting close to 35, then I have to be careful since my first range told me that. Is 17.90 so 17.90 times 2 getting to 35 I have to be very very careful Zero. 
just uh, need to use. Yeah. So we go again. So let's go for the top vibration. Moving closer to 17, we have to be very careful so you do not run more of the acid. Seventeen point eight zero. Seventeen point eight zero. So I started my initial from zero point zero zero, so I have seventeen point eight zero. So subtracting, I have seventeen point eight zero. Now look at this. The difference between these and this is zero point two. The difference between these and this is zero point one. Why the difference between these and these? 0.1. So we can say we are consistent with our three values. Then we can go ahead and calculate the average volume of acids, which is rather called the tighter value. So that is our VA, which is what? 17.90 plus 18.00 plus 17.80. All divided by 3. So let's go ahead. Using the calculator, we have 17.90 plus 18.00 plus 17.80 all divided by that's 53.7 17.90 all divided by 3 so that actually gives me 17.90 17.8 so this is the title value this is the average volume of RC Required to, to what? Completely neutralize 25 centimeter cube of the base. So we've gotten the tighter value. Now the, we can use our results to solve the following problems. Like from your results, determine the concentration of B in mole per dm cube. Don't forget the concentration of B is given to us in gram per dm cube. So we can equally find it in mole per dm cube. So let's do it. Using this formula, concentration of acid multiplied by volume of acid all over. Concentration of base multiplied by volume of base is equal to number of mole of acid over number of mole of base. And the number of moles can be deduced from the equation given to us. So we have two of the acid and one mole of the base. So let's move ahead. Our CA, which is given to us in the question, concentration of acid is 0.14 molarity. Then VA, which is what we just Experiment experimentally from now. So we have 17.90 centimeter cube. Then CB, which is the concentration of the base, is unknown. While VB is the volume of the pipette used, which is 25.00 centimeter cube. Then NA is equal to 2 from the equation. ND equals 1. So majority have difficulties in calculation under titration. It's so much easy. CA is 0.14 times VA which is 17.90 all over CB times 25 all over.
one equals to two over one. So here, when we multiply, we have zero point one four times seventeen point nine zero. So that gives me two point five zero six. All of the twenty five. CB equals 2 over 1. So multiplying and we have 50 CB equals 2.506. So I'll divide both sides by 50. So this divided by 50 gives me 0 0.050 moles per dm cube. So this happens to be the concentration of the base. So with this, I have standardized the base. I have standardized the base with this. So now let's proceed. The second question says find the relative molecular mass of B. Provided that here we could not calculate the relative molecular mass of B straight away because we don't know this element X. So we are going to use this our result we got for the concentration to find what the molar mass provided we are given the what? Mass concentration which is here. So then we use the formula molarity is equal to what? Mass concentration over molar mass. So the molarity, which happens to be the concentration of CB, the CB, which is the molarity, is going to be 0 0.050 because the mass concentration is given from the question. Since the same 5.50 is dissolved solved in one gen cube, so we have 5.50 all over the molar mass, which is what we are looking for. So then we have 0.050 equals 5.50. So the molar mass is going to be what? 5.50 divided by 0 0.050. So let's divide that and see what the answer will be. 5.50 divided by 0 0.050. So that gives me 110 gram per mole. So that happens to be the molar mass of the compound X2CO3. X2CO3. So let's proceed. Let's proceed by calculating the amount of A in solution. Amount of A in solution, that is question D. Question O. Question C says concentration of A in gram per dm cube, which is so much easy. We don't even need any of the uh, values in the experiment to find the concentration of A. So if you find the concentration of A in gram per dm cube, we look at the number of uh, uh, molarity of A, which is 0 0.14, then use this same formula because provided the molar mass of A is 36.5. So you can easily calculate that uh, concentration of A in gram per dm cube, that's what molarity equals mass on over molar mass. So uh, the next the molarity of A is 0 0.14, which is equal to mass pump. We don't need to know that. That's the mass in the concentration in gram per dm cube. But the molar mass which is 36.5. So the mass concentration is going to be equal to what? 0 0.14 times 36.5. So that gives us 5.11 gram per so that happens to be what? the concentration of A in gram per dm cube. So let's move ahead to amount of A in solution. Amount of A in solution. Amount of A, which is M, is equal to concentration times volume of A. Concentration of A times volume of A. So amount is going to be what? 0 0.14 times the volume of A, which is this question here is question C. Here is question B, and all the way from here is question A. So, if I'm not bothering it initially, so here we have time.
17.90. So that gives us 0 0.14 times 17.90. So that gives us 2.506. So the number of moles was 2.506 moles of E is present in the solution. Don't forget, in addition to all what we have done, we have proposed solution to every question for the practical view. Let's look at this, the, mo the mass, the molar mass of B. We can determine the relative molecular mass of X from it. Yes, we can determine the relative molecular mass of X from it, provided we know that X to CO3 equals 110. Then C is 12. O is 16. That would be 16 times 3. Adding it together and subtracting from 110, the remaining mass will be mass of what? X2. So let's draw the person from there. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's free.